Hi everyone, welcome to the Sip and Spin. I am the Tipsy Spinster and this is kind of a segue show between last season and the upcoming season. In my glass is a cocktail that was created in the 1930s by Ernest Hemingway called, appropriately, Death in the Afternoon. It is a combination of champagne and absinthe. And after I get done with today's episode, you're probably going to want to have one because spindle spinning is a little bit like diving down a rabbit hole. Okay, so today's show is all about spindle spinning. There are two types of spindle spinning. There is support spinning and there is drop spindle spinning. These are two, two schools. However, there is, of course, some crossover. And I have only been support spinning for a little over a year. So this show is a little bit like a revisit. I wanted to go back and I wanted to bridge some gaps and I wanted to share some of the things that I've learned as I've continued exploring the idea of spindle spinning. Say, see, it's kind of like a sobriety check. If I can still say spindle spinning, I haven't consumed enough cocktails. So let's back up a little bit. Traditionally, spinning started when somebody a very, very long time ago realized that if you put twist into either plant or animal fiber, you were going to create a stronger yarn. You're going to create a stronger product. And so spinning was invented, followed very closely by weaving, and I've discovered day dresses, which are very simple to make, and I would encourage you to check out many of the day dress patterns that are out there because, gosh, it's kind of like the yoga pants of the modern age. I think as we move forward through this century, more of us might be finding ourselves wearing day dresses because, gosh, they're comfy. Okay, so here we go. Initially, all you need to spin yarn is a stick, a tool, something that's going to put twist in the fiber. And you, this is, uh, <clears throat> I think this might actually be a meat skewer that you would use like in a turkey, but it has a crook on the top. And so the fiber that I'm going to be practicing with today is a hodgepodge. This is a blend of glitz and some silk and long staple, a bunch of different fibers. And the reason why I chose this is because most of the time when I talk to new spinners, one of the things that entices them into spinning in the first place is the beautiful fiber. So I picked beautiful fiber to play with. And to get started, the idea of just spinning is you're putting twist in the fiber. You have this, this sweet spot right here, your, your drafting zone, and that's where you're going to be pulling out from. And of course, you're always going to hold very loosely. Basically, all I'm doing back here is keeping the fiber from moving forward too quickly. And I'm just putting in twist. And you can actually, the nice thing with a, a crook style is you can actually see the twist moving up the drafting zone, just like so. So now I essentially have my leader, which I'm going to be using a little bit later. There are many different styles of this crook style spindle. So this is a stick that's made with bamboo. It functions the same way. When I get started, I'm actually going to wrap this around a little bit. And my crook, which essentially will eventually translate into a hook, holds the fiber as I draft out.
And this is a slow process. It really is. But early man, this is how they would have put twist into the fiber. As we move forward in time, we get fancier sticks. And I have three essentially Russian style sticks here. The fang is a, is a little bit different. But here is a, an antique. This is a Russian style support spindle that actually still has some yarn left over on it. Has the base down here for using in a support bowl where you're going to initially start your fiber and then the tip that you're going to spin off of. And since I already have a leader, here's the nice thing with Russian style spindles, you can put the fiber anywhere. The one thing that you have to remember, if you're a new spinner, there are no spinning police. So I'm going to start the fiber way up at the top. Now here's the downside. The antique spindles that I have encountered, they're very light. They don't spin very long. So essentially, they are basically a stick, but they don't have the crook on the top. They're slow spinners. Now here's the great thing with modern technology, we have modern woodworkers, master craftsmen, who have created Russian style spindles that, <laughs> this feels a little bit like magic. So I'm gonna get this started down here. This is Holly. And I chose holly. It's the wood. I, I didn't name it holly. The, it's actually the wood is holly. And the reason why I chose it is because it's very light. So in terms of weight, it's similar to these two. And if you look back at one of the first support spindle videos that I did, I talk extensively about weight. And the reason why weight is important is because weight creates inertia. And that's what's going to enable a spindle to spin for a while. And I'm going to park this right here. So here's the other thing. I have it started down here, but as I spin, I'm going to park it up here just it to it just because it's faster. And as I spin, I will park it there. I'm going to be spinning off the tip and I will turn slightly so you can see my hands as I do this from a better angle. When I spin, I'm essentially using my hands just to keep, I'm just holding on to it. And then once I get a little bit of a cup built up, I will wind on. Russian spindles are nice because they create, regardless of how your fiber is processed, they are essentially going to create an incredibly light, airy, woolen yarn just because of the nature of how that spinning happens. Fang style spindles are similar to Russian spindles, except they are concave and they have a much more feminine feel to them. Now, at some point, so you have for a huge amount of time, people spinning with sticks. And then at some point, somebody went, hey, what happens if we take a bone and drill a hole through it? And then we can take that stick that we've been using forever and put it through that hole that we've created. And now we have a spindle that spins so much longer and it can be supported or suspended. Either one, it can either be supported or it can be suspended. And there's a benefit to both. So let's talk support first. 
There are a lot of varieties of support style spindles. The bead is probably as popular as the Takli. And so we have two. I'm going to talk about the Takli first because of the weight of it. Takli spindles are generally used when spinning cotton. It is a bottom whorl, which means the whorl sits at the bottom. It's a support spindle, so there's a point here. They either can have a hook at the top or not. And these spindles, and I'm just going to take off a little bit here, these spindles spin fast. And the reason why they spin fast, there's a definite weight to them. They need to spin fast because cotton requires higher twist than wool. And this is where you're going to start getting, when you get the faster twist, that's where you're going to start seeing woolen yarn created. Tacklies are nice because this is where you can also spin very thin if you want to create thread. And they spin fast. So I'm spinning fast and I'm spinning very fine with a tockley. Primarily used for cotton. Bead spindles are the same. And the, here are two styles. These are both Spanish peacock. One is a complete bead. The other is a hollowed out bead or a ninja. And this is one of those things where I've never actually timed twist how, how long they spin consecutively. The bead spins for a very long time. However, this little guy will spin forever and ever and ever and ever. And what does that mean? Well, here's the benefit. If you've got a spindle that's going to spin for a very long time, the really nice thing with that is it gives you a long time to work with your yarn. So here, the nice thing when if you've got a ninja or a bead spindle that spins fast, I'm supporting it with my ring finger and the energy is building up, but it's giving me time to work in my drafting zone. And again, you can see my drafting zone is still right here. I'm going to pull some fiber out, get the twist going. And the nice thing with the support spindle is it's supported. It's not going to go anywhere. So I have time to work with my fiber up here. Whereas when you get to a drop spindle right here, and while these are so popular and historically accurate, the downside to a drop spindle is it's hanging. It's using gravity. And if you're not careful, that spindle's going to fall. Whereas some of these, like this one, it has a stone whirl on the top. I like it has an incredibly pointed bottom, which means I can use this, even though it's a drop spindle, I can still use it as a support spindle to get started. And as a new spinner, I realized this was a game changer for me because I needed the support before I moved off the table and let it hang and do its job as a drop spindle. So having something that is going to give you the option to start supported and move drop opened up a whole new world for me. And that's where I discovered the Tibetans and some of these other spindles that, this is a Kromsky that either functions as a top whorl or a bottom whorl. And the novelty spindles. And I think as I've moved through the spindle pantheon, some of the novelty spindles have been as fun to discover as the more traditional. So this is a handmade. It's made with a wheel and a dowel and a hook. 
and a reminder that S twist goes that way and Z twist goes this way and Z twist is traditionally what we do as a single. It can either be a top or a bottom whirl. It's very lightweight, so it's not going to spin for very long, but it's functional. And then we also have these tiny, cute little lollipops. This is a top whirl drop spindle, and I can get the fiber going. It's not going to spin for very long because it is lightweight, but as a novelty, it, it still functions really well. And it, it has what I would call a small footprint. So I can spin over a table and I have this very small range of motion, which again, kind of is a security feature. Something small like this as a new spinner, I don't know, there's something about having a small footprint as a new spinner, it's really nice because I know if it drops, it's not going to go very far and it's not going to be damaged. Then we also have other novelty spindles such as the ones that are computer generated. This is, is a dowel rod and the TARDIS. And it actually spins for quite a while as well. And it does have a small footprint also. And then you have additional historic spindles. One being the Jalligan, which is a Scottish spindle, which is kind of nice. I featured this on my worldwide spin and public day. The nice thing with a Jalligan is that it's completely drop spindle. You just put the half hitch up at the top and hopefully it'll stay. Half hitch up at the top. Wait. Oh, you do need to use your cross down at the bottom. Oops. So you use your cross, half hitch up at the top like so. And then you can spin, and as you're winding on, this is essentially a nostopine. So you're creating a ball as you make your yarn. And I have it started right there. So when I slide this off, I will have a center pole ball. Along those same lines, we have Turkish spindles. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that Turkish spindles are my absolute favorite first spindles because you can spin supported or you can spin drop style and as you wind your cop on which is just over two under one over two under one you create a center pull ball that you can fly from Turkish spindles are amazing in that they are probably the most versatile spindle out there. It is the best of both worlds. It is both a support spindle as well as a drop spindle. And then the last one that I want to talk about is the one that just doesn't quite fit in anywhere. And I've discovered why. There's very little known about Victorian silk spinners. So I'm just going to make stuff up and I'm going to have another drink while I do it. Actually, I'm not making things up. I'm, I'm making an inference. Let's go with that. So in sewing for Victorian times, which I've done because I do enjoy a really nice steampunk festival once in a while, what I've noticed in sewing Victorian era garments, there's very little room. The way the sleeves are constructed, let me put it to you this way. Victorian women didn't run around with their arms above their head. It just didn't happen. They kept their arms down. The Victorian lace spindle, and this is an absolutely beautiful design created by the Spanish peacock. And no, I'm not spinning pure silk. There is silk in this, but I'm not, I'm not spinning silk. I've decided or I've come to the conclusion I'm going to make an inference that this is to Victorian times what the fidget spinner is 
to modern times. And this is why. This has such a strange design, but I think I understood why. Victorian young ladies would have had their fiber close at hand, either with a distaff, on their wrist. I would assume most likely with a wrist distaff. They would spin fine, but because they couldn't raise their arms, this would have been something to do while having tea or polite conversation. So they would create a small bit of yarn, very fine silk, and then wind on. So this, this essentially harkens back to the Russian style spindles because what you're essentially doing is using a stick to create very fine yarn and you're doing so in, in, in a rather tight box or rather tight quarters. They don't spin very long. They do spin fast, but again, as you're having polite conversation, arms never moving above your head, which the spindle just simply doesn't allow because of the nature of the design, you are creating this beautiful fine yarn in a very tight space. I know as a modern spinner, I have a tendency Two, once I get going, especially if I'm doing long draw, this would also be a very good spindle if you have shoulder issues, because for me, I have a tendency once I get going, I try to create the longest thread I possibly can, and that's not what the spindle was designed to do. So I realized as I was going out that it would stop before I could get this like down to the ground thing. And that's when I started thinking about it. This design was designed for a very small window. A Victorian lady would never spin with her arms all over the place. A proper Victorian lady would keep her spindle close at hand having tea and conversation. And it would be something to do. If you were living in Victorian times and you didn't crochet, didn't needlepoint, didn't knit, didn't want to do any of those things, this tool could have kept your hands busy while you were still carrying on polite conversation. And it's compact enough that when it was time to go home, you could simply put it in pocket or bag and you'd be ready to go. Uh, none of the other styles of spindles that are out there right now afford this kind of compactability and discreetness. So if you are a Victorian lady and would like to spin silk, this is definitely the spindle that you want to use. Like I said, I, I absolutely believe this is the fidget spinner of the Victorian era. So th this was just a giant compendium recap of all of the styles of spindles that are out there. And on my next season, I plan to look at each one of these much more in depth. But hopefully this was enough to kind of whet your appetite for maybe checking out one of these amazing spindles and giving spindle spinning a try. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy spinning.